What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and I can't believe it, but after two years using Empower, I'm back on Quicken. In today's video, I'll explain why, and I'll give you a tour of the desktop application, the mobile application, and the browser-based version, and I'll give you my review as well here in late 2024. So long-time viewers will know that I've been using Empower, formerly called Personal Capital. Uh, this is their personal dashboard for about a couple years now, and uh, I really, really like this software. So what happened? Why am I on Quicken now? Uh, well, you know, the first thing was just a little bug that cropped up. Um, they launched a new feature, which was to create rules for automatic categorization um, based on payee. What I didn't know is that it's just based on payee and not by amount. So what happens is, you know, I get my paycheck from my employer, but they also reimburse me for things like internet and other expenses. Um, on the screen, you've got um, a little expense that uh, was actually, um, they treated me and my parents to a meal while I was in Japan, uh, which is really nice of them. But unfortunately what happened is when they deployed this, um, this rule, it, um, it didn't work properly. And, and so um, <laughs> because I'd categorize some stuff as internet, and then it started categorizing all of my paychecks as internet. And um, even if I went in and tried to like change the category for that transaction, um, it would look like it saved, and then a moment later it would refresh and go back to being internet instead of being a paycheck. So obviously, as you can see here on the screen, um, that has been fixed, thank goodness, which I'm really happy about because there really is no other free um, really fully featured application uh, like Empower that's out there. So um, I, I'm glad that I can still recommend it now that they fixed this bug. And so that leaves the question like, all right, well, why am I still using Quicken, you know, since they fixed this bug? Well, I didn't know this at the time when I when I ha went ahead and bought a year's worth of Quicken. Uh, but the major reason is that I realized that uh, when I end up hopefully retiring early <laughs> uh, abroad, then of course I'll need to have a local bank account. And that bank account is going to have to be in a different currency. And while I could just kind of keep track of that separately or, you know, on a spreadsheet or whatever, um, I thought it would, it would be best to have it all in one piece of software and really Quicken is the only one um, that I know of that will be able to handle everything that I wanted to handle, but also be able to handle accounts that are denominated in a foreign currency. So that's a really cool thing about Quicken. And so, you know, uh, I'm not 100% sold on it. It's been about, you know, a little bit over a week um, and I've had to put in a ton of effort to uh, re-enter all of my transactions into Quicken to get it um, back up to date because, of course, you know, when you kind of connect the bank accounts, it doesn't load up, you know, all that much data. We had over two years of data to fill in. So, yeah, it was a real, real labor to, um, to get that all set up. Uh, but now I've got Quicken up and running again and I've got all my, I've got all my data in there. And uh, so, so far, so good. I'm pretty happy with it. What we'll do next is I'll give you kind of uh, a tour of the application as it looks here in late 2024, and then I'll give you my review after that. So first things first, the version of Quicken that I purchased is Quicken Classic Premiere. There is also Homelit and Business, which I used to use and kind of uh, wish I'd gotten, but I might upgrade um, after a year um, to the Home and Business, uh, but right now um, this is the one I'm using, and generally it's still going to do everything that I want it to do. And when you fire Quicken up, the first thing it asks you to do is put in your Password Vault password. Um, this is necessary for all kinds of accounts that are linked, uh, but for, for some of them it is, just depending on you know kind of what method they use to pull the transaction data with that bank. In any case, you put your password in, and then it updates all your accounts and then it also syncs um, your your database that lives on your desktop or laptop with the cloud as well if you set that up so that's what we've got going on here is that um, quick little update so that took maybe about 30 seconds or so and we can see that we did download a new transaction to my capital one venture x credit card before we click into that though let's just do kind of a quick tour of um, this home screen which is a dashboard that is customizable you can kind of set this up and um, put in different things so you can toggle off the classic dashboard and then you can actually customize it as well but what we've got here that I've set up is basically uh, bills, incomes, and transfer reminders in the first one, which is nice to see what's coming up. Uh, but this isn't a feature that's really all that critical right now. More on that later when we dig into the bills and income section of the application. Um, but just quickly, I guess, yeah, then we've got net worth over time, which is nice to see. 
Um, we've got income and expenses here. We're looking at the last six months. Um, then I've got my top spending categories last month. Really nice to have that on the home screen. Um, then recent transactions. Uh, and then also on the investing side, I've got my portfolio here uh, in the bottom right. Then on the left is the account bar. This is really um, a lot like what you have in uh, personal capital or Empower. And I'll try to call it just Empower from here on out. It's shorter and you know that's that's who it is now. It's the Empower personal dashboard. Anyway, one nice thing that Empower doesn't have, as you can see in the very bottom left, is a estimate of the credit score. There's many different calculations of your credit score out there. Um, and this is, I don't think it's a, a FICO score from FICO, but anyway, it gives you a good idea of where your credit score is and how it's been evolving over time, keeping track there. And then as far as the accounts, they are nicely broken out with um, banking at the top, and then you've got your uh, credit cards kind of below the, so it, it actually will um, categorize them into checking and then savings um, and then all the credit cards and then on the investing side as well and and you can um, you know create dividers and move things around as well i've got the the investment accounts there um, there's a little dividing line between the after tax and then the tax advantaged accounts as you can see so next let's click on the spending tab and take a look over there so here we've got my spending for the last month um, as you can see of course the top categories are going to be rent and tax and then you have a nice section down below that is scrollable that has all the transactions and then if you want to dig into any of these items, like if I want to dig into food and dining, I can click on that, uh, drill down a little bit more, and get more detail on how much I spent on groceries, and then how much I spent on restaurants as well. This spending report, of course, I can also change to get rid of tax, because I might like to see spending without taxes. So I would just go to the drop down and click on spending without taxes, and there you go. That's a more accurate picture of my spending last month. And then of course you can look on the income side as well. That's another item on the drop down. But for, for that, I think, you know, it makes more sense to jump over here and look on the bills and income tab. So the first kind of sub tab here in the bills and income section is of course um, any bills that are coming up. And this can be especially useful um, when you're early on and really kind of optimizing everything and being very careful about, um, about all your spending. Um, now I choose to just keep a nice big buffer of $3,000 in my checking account so I don't really have to worry about um, you know exactly what's coming up and when and all that kind of stuff it's a little bit less stressful um, but this is certainly something that I enjoyed doing uh, earlier on in, in my um, financial journey um, and then I guess I kind of got a kick out of it too <laughs> I'm just one of those people uh, anyway, so those are the bills. Then we've got income and transfers. And so here's just a listing. And of course, you can expand, you know, this to show um, over the next 30 days, 90 days, and even 12 months. And then using all of these data, we're also able to project um, account balances. So this is kind of a neat thing. Uh, and Power has something to give you kind of an idea of what your cash flows are going to be. Um, but it doesn't really explicitly project an account balance. So this is something that's unique to Quicken. Um, well, not 100%, but you know, among the, the major softwares out there, um, it's one of the only ones that I know of that can do that. And then, of course, you can't even project account balances for other accounts. Like if it knows you've got certain bills that are going to hit different credit cards, um, you could build that into here as well. So I do think it is a, a nice feature. But again, because I keep this $3,000 buffer in my checking, then I don't really have to worry so much about you know what the low level is um, for the projection on the account balance. Whereas back in the day when I used to keep a really small buffer in there, then I really would have to worry about like, all right, we have this big payment coming. Um, I don't want to like overdraft or get too low. So I would have to be a little bit more careful. Um, so it does bring a lot of peace of mind to keep a, a nice fat buffer in there. Well, while we're at it, um, I should compare kind of the spending section uh, that we have here in Quicken to Empower. So with Empower, you, you also will be able to see a nice visual breakdown of your spending. And you can also drill down into all these different categories. So that's available there. So I'd say both pieces of software are pretty good in this regard. Okay, now let's go over and take a look at the planning section. And so here's an area where, you know, I have good things to say about Empower and there are some things that Quicken does a little bit better or differently. So right here, what we're looking at is the budget. And this is something that you can't really do with Empower. With Empower, you can set an overall spending goal uh, for each month and for each year. And so it's kind of an overall budget, but it doesn't allow you to set um, particular goals for each individual category. Now, again, I'm at a, a stage in my personal finance journey where I don't really care uh, all that much about tracking each of those individual categories. Um, but 
when I do uh, eventually fire abroad, I will of course be starting from scratch. So whereas right now I really have um, kind of everything on autopilot and it's really easy for me to stay relatively within my budget without even thinking about it, um, I will at the beginning when I move have to start tracking these things again and get a good handle on it. So it's not really a bad thing um, that I have this here and I don't have to do it like on paper or somewhere separately. It's all built into the application. So if you're a big budgeter, um, this is something that Quicken has that, uh, that Empower does not. Next, we've got the debt reduction section. And so here, thankfully, I don't have any debt, but if I did, this would be a good place to you know, make a plan and um, track that progress and stay motivated in doing that. So I think that could be useful for people. I don't know that there is an equivalent of this in Empower. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that there is. Um, but by the same token, it does have a tool that shows you your uh, emergency fund, which is kind of a nice thing. And I think you can, you can set some goals in Empower as well. One thing I know for sure that you can do in Empower, and it does it really well, is to do a retirement uh, analyzer to kind of come up with a plan for retirement. You can put in all kinds of different scenarios and things that crop up. Uh, and he gives you the Monte Carlo analysis of what your prob probability of success would be based on historical data. Anyway, it's, it's pretty cool, um, but of course, Quick and Classic here can do that as well. So we've got a plan here that assumes that um, I would be living on my current annual expenses of about $40,000 a year. And you can see that while the plan would kind of work, it looks like ish. Um, the account balances do get kind of uh, worrisomely low um, as time goes on. So of course, that's the whole reason why I'm looking to fire abroad uh, to really cut down those expenses and make it a lot more um, well, a lot easier to do with a much higher chance of success as well. Uh, but again, this is something that both can do, but uh, I'm glad that Quick and Classic has that, and so it's not something I'm losing by moving over. Next here, we have an item that um, is unique to, to Quick and Classic that Empower doesn't have, uh, which is the ability to project your tax um, due or, or tax refund. Now, of course, this is something you could do separately. You could use TaxCaster, uh, many tools out there. Uh, but it is nice to have it kind of all built in one. And of course, it's pulling all the data as well um, from you know, everything that you've put in here. So whereas with Empower, um, I could not track anything but my net paycheck. I can track my gross paychecks here in Quick and Classic. It takes more work because uh, they're a little bit variable every week. Um, I have to usually update like uh, one of the, the, the categories by like a penny or two in one direction or the other, which is annoying. I wish my paycheck were exactly the same every week and I didn't have to do that, but it's okay. Anyway, so it's nice all the data is in there. And because I sold some investments earlier this year to fund a large purchase, um, then I will have a bit of tax due uh, come come next year and it's pretty cool that this can let me know how much that's looking to be uh, Then finally we have a place where you can set up some savings goals. So that's pretty cool um, Also a helpful thing like if you just want to set up a sinking fund I mean, I don't know if you'd call it that but anyway if you want to set up like hey I want to save up for this trip or you know save up for these gifts. I want to do for Christmas um, this would be a useful place to do that. Okay, the next major section we have is investing. So looking at here at the investment section, um, it does have like a nice dashboard that you can set up that will show you your top movers. Above that, we've got, you know, kind of like our overall holdings and the total value of the account, uh, how much it changed today. Uh, then we've got, you know, a nice pie chart of uh, what my assets look like based on like what uh, what the holdings are and of course you can choose to look at only some accounts and not others uh, you can customize things as well in terms of what securities to look at you can kind of customize the display by showing the name or the symbol and in general something to note is that a lot of this customization is a thing that's really really cool about quick and classic that isn't necessarily available on other platforms and certainly there's more customization available here than there is on empower on the bottom right, we have um, you know the portfolio value over time, which is cool to see, and then over what's been happening uh, this year. But we have other tools. So here we have just basically the portfolio, you know what the different holdings are, and what some of the statistics we might want to look at are as well. And of course, this is something that you do have in uh, Empower. You can you know look at your holdings, and it does have a lot of other useful information as well, uh, which is going to be a bit similar to you know. Uh, some of the other tools that we have on here. So one for sure that you have in Empower uh, is the ability to look at your asset allocation. And so that's something that we have here, which is um, nice to have in Quicken as well. Uh, but here you can also set a target allocation 
think you can do that in power too and see how you are off you know with target like if, if you're on target or not uh, but a cool thing that this has that you don't have in empower is the ability to rebalance your portfolio over here so nice to have a tool that will do that and then also a guide to sh shifting your allocation as well and of course we have a performance section this is pretty cool where you can see the value of our portfolio um, relative to the cost basis and you can also see how your portfolio has done uh, relative to an index and that's um, you know the comparison to an index is something you do have in empower um, but as far as I remember you couldn't look at your portfolio value against cost basis on a chart so that's a cool thing that we have here in Quick and Classic then finally here in the investment section Quick and Classic has partnered with Morningstar to do kind of this portfolio x-ray deal uh, which is really I think quite useful you can see a whole lot of data about your portfolio in terms of uh, you know the asset allocation the world regions uh, the different sectors that you're invested in you can see sectors in empower though um, kind of the style uh, as well and then a bunch of other statistics um, on top of that one thing to point out here is the fees and expenses you can see mine are quite low at just 0.06 percent which is awesome uh, but that's also something that you can see in uh, empower it does help you keep an eye on those fees and let you know about the impact of them as well so I would say that overall here in terms of investments Quicken Classic is more robust than Empower. One of the really nice things as well is that it has all of my 401k data. Uh, my 401k is with Vanguard which is great mind you but it doesn't share um, all of the, the actual lot detail. Um, it just kind of shares the overall value with, um, with third parties. And so that's a limitation set by Vanguard. It's not Empower's fault. If Empower got that data I'm sure they'd have a way to show it. Um, but they don't have it and so it's nice here now um, I did have to put it on man uh, in all manually but uh, Quicken does have all of my lot detail for my 401k uh, which is nice to have not critical again you know all of this uh, historical data yes I've got it going back all the way to 2006 or something like that um, it's neat to have but to be honest with you I didn't miss it that much when I was with Empower so unless you really really need all the stuff that I'm showing you here with Quicken um, I got along just fine with Empower and I was very happy with it again what I really am looking for um, is the ability to budget initially which I could do on paper um, but then mostly the ability to track accounts that are in a foreign currency which you can't do with Empower and both of these platforms by the way Quicken and Empower are as far as I've seen you know by far the most robust when it comes to doing investments so if this is really an important part of your financial journey uh, these would be two to look at whereas the other platforms I've done reviews on many of them you can you can check them out um, but they're not nearly as powerful in terms of looking at investing Okay, here we have property and debt. So of course, this is going to be, you know, uh, net worth and its two components, which are property and debt or assets and liabilities. So that's cool. You can see, as I said, going back all the way to 2006, I have my data in here, uh, which is nice to see. You can see what kind of accounts that's all coming from as well. And then we can focus in on just the property section or the debt section. Um, I don't think it's all that interesting or important for me to click on those for you right now. So before we look at mobile and web, I think one more thing will be just to kind of show you how this um, what, what it happens when you have a transaction that gets downloaded so you can see I have a flag there by my Capital One Venture X card so let's check take a look and see what's going on there by clicking on that and what we can see are a couple of um, uncleared transactions that um, I've entered uh, manually and uh, one of those was an Amazon purchase and um, also the uh, the return of an item that will be a refund coming in and so eventually once that posts at the bank then you know those transactions will be cleared and I'll be able to reconcile uh, on that note you know one nice thing is that we can put in transactions that haven't posted in quick and classic um, that's something something you can do in empower uh, but at the same time it's more work and so uh, you know I, I will miss um, never having to really enter manual transactions uh, that was a nice thing about empower I did not miss having to do this um, and it I could be using Quicken still in a way where I didn't do that by the way I could just wait for the transactions to post and so I'm probably going to start doing that from this moment on because yeah there's you know it's just, just too much work it's not worth it but this whole thing about reconciling and cleared transactions and all that um, is only a requirement because there are two versions of the database there's a local database 
um, that's saved on your laptop or desktop here with Quicken Quick and Classic. And then there's also the data that's on the cloud that might be, you know, at your banking institution or, um, you know, if you want to access Quicken on your mobile application, um, also on, um, on the web, uh, then there's a second version of the database that's up on the cloud. And of course, that can introduce the possibility of having sync issues, which is one of the big frustrations that I had uh, when I left Quicken about two, two and a half years ago. So far, I haven't encountered really any, any major issues. Um, I did notice that one of the splits on one of my transactions was showing up as uncategorized on the web, but of course I had categorized it on, on my desktop application. Uh, that's the only issue I've seen so far, and hopefully that's the only issue I'm gonna see. So fingers crossed, we shall see, you know, I'll probably do an update on Quicken when I go to renew uh, next year and let you know what my thoughts are, are on it. And I'll probably, like I said, upgrade to that home business version uh, to track the business stuff, which is really just the LLC for uh, this YouTube channel and any other ventures that I might do. So again, definitely, you know, a benefit to the simplicity of something like Empower or other applications that are web-based is that you don't have to worry about having these two separate databases and having them get out of sync. But so long as things are syncing properly, then um, we are able to access a slightly lighter weight version of Quicken on the web and also on the mobile app. So let's take a look at those. So here's the home screen for Quicken on the web. And just like with Quicken Classic on the desktop, you've got um, a nice kind of dashboard with a bunch of different widgets. Um, they are customizable to some degree, but not nearly as much um, as the ones that are on the, the desktop version. But it's still nice to have, and a lot of the UI should be fairly familiar to um, what was on the desktop with our, you know, our accounts bar over here on the left. And then, of course, these icons um, on the far left are different kind of modules that we can look at, and they're similar. So we've got this dashboard, then we can look at our transactions, then we can look at various reports, spending, net income, income against expenses. Uh, then we can look at our budgets, which is cool to have. Again, something we don't have and empower the detailed budgets. And then also bills and income, which is also something you can't really set up and empower. You can see your upcoming credit card bills and empower, um, but you can't really put in all these recurring things, like things that you might um, otherwise not really consider. Things like, oh, every year I've got to register my car, or maybe I pay my auto insurance every six months, or you know, different things like that that are, are not all that frequent and a lot of people tend to forget about in their budgets. It can be helpful to have those kind of, you know, as reminders and also built into your budget as well. So looking at the reports, uh, we can do quite a bit here. We can export these, which is pretty cool. We can download them as Excel, CSV, or a PDF. Uh, you can filter them. Um, on the reports here, you've got basically the three. You've got spending, net income, and income versus expense. And of course, we can change the time frames. And there is some level of customization with these reports. So here we're looking at uh, my spending for last month. And we got that nice pie chart, uh, which does let you hover over and see different items. And then, of course, you can look at it instead um, as a bar. And we can look at it as a total. And we can also look at um, our spending over time as well. So pretty cool. We are also able to look at the investments to some degree on the web app as well, but it's a lot more basic here. Just the overall value, how much cash I've got, what was the change today, and what are my different holdings. So we're missing a lot of that stuff like the portfolio x-ray, the asset allocations, uh, the performance charts, all that stuff is not available on the web. And while we're on that subject, one thing I would suggest to Quicken is that, yes, right now they're really catering mostly towards those people that uh, might want to have just a desktop experience, they don't really care about mobile or web, and um, you know some of those people don't even want to have an account on the cloud. But what they could do is slowly start to build out the capabilities of the cloud versions to where they're at feature parity with the desktop, so that for those of us that do want to have things um, on the cloud as well on the desktop, you could end up having a basically sort of cloud only version um, where, you know, there would only be one database that does live on the cloud. And so then you wouldn't have any of these sync issues. There wouldn't be a local database anymore. You could just opt in say, to have only a cloud database, and then we would not have any of these sync issues. So I do hope Quicken uh, would think about doing something like that in the future.
So overall, though, um, I would say that the web version, you know, has the basic stuff that you need. It's got your budgets, income and spending. It's got kind of a very uh, cursory view of your investments. And so that's all there. But what you're missing are those really more powerful tools that we saw there that are on Quick and Classic. And that, you know, you do have a lot of those uh, more powerful things on Empower on the web, but we don't have them here on Quicken on the web. And I do think that there's no reason why Quicken could build those out over time. So lastly, let's take a look at the mobile app, and then I'll give you my final review and thoughts. Okay, so firing up the Quicken app here, kind of the nice thing about the Quicken app is that you um, don't have to put in a fingerprint or a password or anything like that when you open it. It just pops right open. And then if you want to um, update your transactions, then all you got to do is kind of swipe down. And you can see now it's starting to load up any new transactions that are on there. What you have basically is a mobile friendly view of the dashboard that we saw on Quicken on the web. So just the same as you had there, you're not going to have any of all those really advanced features, but you're going to have all the basic stuff. So here we've got my different account balances, property and debt. You can add a transaction on the fly, so that's a nice thing to be able to do. You've got your bill and income reminders, uh, recent transactions, recent spending, top payees and your spending over time, net income by month, and more detail on the latest month. Then you've got a little bit on your investments and also on your current budget. Clicking here on the menu bar on the left, uh, we can see that we have really all of the widgets that we had online as well. You can look at all your accounts, you've got your transactions, um, there's the bills area, there's your budget, your very basic investments, and then the different reports that we can look at here. So we've got, you know, the monthly summary, net income, net worth, spending by category, payee, and over time. And of course, all the other stuff you want in the app, like your profile and settings. So there you go, guys. That's a tour of Quicken on desktop, mobile, and web. Hope that was helpful. So what am I thinking with Quicken? Uh, well, you know, Quicken continues to be sort of the most capable and powerful personal finance software that I know of that's out there. I am going to miss the simplicity of having, you know, really most of those features in empower but not having to worry about reconciling and you know having any sync issues and all that stuff so i am going to miss empower to some degree but i do think that for when i fire and move abroad i will you know be happy that i've got quicken to be able to track those foreign currency currency accounts all in one database not having to do things separately in a spreadsheet uh, and then also that it's going to be able to um, help me to more carefully budget, which will be important, I think, in that first year or so, um, just as I kind of get my feet into the new game. I do have reviews on a lot of the other personal finance softwares that are out there that you can check out, things like Monarch and um, uh, You Need a Budget, YNAB. There's also the Nerd Wallet application as well. Some of these are free, some of these are paid, so check out the reviews, see what you think. But in terms of really the most fully featured and powerful ones, again, for me, uh, there's Empower, which is free, which I can still, you know, def very much recommend. I think it's great. Um, and then if you really need kind of like guns blazing, all the features, or if you're someone that doesn't like the whole cloud thing and just wants, wants to have things on your personal machine, uh, then Quick and Classic is going to be the way to go. Unless, of course, there's something out there that I don't know about. If there's something great that I haven't reviewed, do please let us know in the comments below so I can check it out. With that, I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.